good evening everyone and welcome welcome to this new day in different ways but there are some people who live for a purpose and they are all our unsung heroes who join us on the international fab talks because they have a purpose in life they have understood the importance of life the meaning of life just like our celebrity today who is joining us all the way from madurai she is a wonderful personality she is dr c rajeshwari let's welcome her and get to know about her thoughts and views and celebrate her journey today on the international fab talks hello ma'am and welcome to the session welcome thank you thank you so much ma'am for being a part of our journey thank you for being a patron to the international fab talks thank you very much with your permission i go ahead and share your profile and then we begin the session yes dear fine thank you ma'am my dear friends you'll be wondering as to who dr c rajeshwari is what does she do and how has she been able to face all the difficult phases in her life as we all face our tough times how did dr rajeshwari do it in her style let's get to know more about it first i introduce her in an official way and then we go ahead now friends as i earlier mentioned we have with us dr c rajeshwari she is a translator since 1985 a great researcher a linguist a writer publisher and editor she has completed a phd in translation studies from the madurai kamraj university tamil nadu india there's much more to her profile i'd like to add more she is the editor of two monthly journals named love tamil and tamil anugu tamil journals both online and in print she has rich experience in translating texts from different fields it could be technology literature ecology sociology law medicine etc she is a recipient of the best translator award from the government of tamil nadu india she has authored translated and edited 101 books and she is going strong she loved to really cross that mark as well she was an associate editor of the encyclopedia of tamil literature and learn Japanese through Tamil. That's really nice. Learn Japanese through Tamil, published by Institute of Asian Studies, Chennai, Tamil Nadu. She teaches Tamil language and literature for non-Tamils from the USA. There are different students from joining from different foreign countries. For example, the USA, Europe, Australia. She helps them in their research, and she has prepared textbooks titled as Easy English and Tamil for non-Tamils. she has served as a tamil lecturer uh, for a few years in three reputed colleges in madurai she worked in different translation and re uh, religious dictionaries dictionary projects related to biblical hebrew and greek in the people education trust at madurai that's really nice uh, she has also been a copy editor and translator in kamalam infotech and arvind i hospital both in annanagar madurai she taught tamil to pg ophthalmologists from other states and countries as well she is a reach researcher of guess what you will be surprised mgr films and politics she loves to connect with that beautiful personality mr mgr uh, you know he is really revered for all the good that he has done for tamil nadu and for india as well uh, she is a researcher of mgr films and politics for more than 3 decades She has released twenty books in Tamil and one in English about MGR. Her aim is to publish around hundred books with regard to Mr. MGR. Uh, she loves reading, writing, and sharing. It's her passion, and she loves connecting with the world, with the youth, enlightening everybody. Let's get enlightened. Let's get empowered by this personality who's here with us. She is Dr. C. Rajeshwar. We'll get to know more about her. Hello, ma'am, and thank you for being here with us. It's really wonderful. You have so many feathers in your cap. You have done so many different roles, as we've just mentioned now: a translator, teaching foreign students, and you know, a writer, an editor, a publisher, and all of this. That's really great. Happy to have you here, dear. I've shared something from my side. How would you define yourself? Who is the real Dr. C. Rajeshwar? Yes, dear. Ah. Uh. i'm a hard working woman self made woman but i am supported by i have moral support from many of my friends 
family and I'm blessed with good teachers. So all of them had made me what I am now. I love reading, writing and sharing. That is the only thing I do in my life. So I can say that I am made up of facts and events which, uh, which are astonishing. Actually, I am astonished by new things when I read. I always want to have academic glow or academically excellent people around me. So that's my love and passion in my life. Excellent, ma'am. That's wonderful. That's really very nice. Now, ma'am, the first question that I'd like to pose, how does it feel to teach Tamil to the non-speaking mm. Tamil students, especially mm. from the US and the other countries they have joined? to learn it from you. How, how is this experience, if you could share that? It's amazing. Because there is a very distinct difference between teaching Indian students and American students. For Indian students, when I teach in colleges, I have to read the poem, explain that, or read the text, give them some uh, notes, something like that. We have to teach and everything which is uh, um, given in our, in our textbook. Whereas for American students, we need not teach anything. They will read the text and they'll try to find out the meaning and try to understand everything. What they want us to do is they have some questions. They will come with some specific questions which demands extensive reading from our side. Otherwise, we can't answer them at at that uh, time, we can ask them time. We are, I will come and tell you tomorrow or I need a week's time, we can ask, but I have never done it. Uh, I was capable of giving them impressive answers for their questions. Because whenever I give them an answer, they'll say I'm impressed. Uh, later on, I came to know that is a, a word of appreciation. So, uh, that's what they do. They, they don't want me to read the text and explain them. They will say, uh, we can read the text. Just and, uh, explain or give us some. I have some question. Please answer them. Uh, at the beginning, uh, it was strange for me to... Uh, that experience when a student says, sitting in her chair, I have a question. Please answer. Usually the teachers, Indian teachers will ask the students, whereas the American students uh, ask the teachers like that. But it was in, uh, challenging. Uh, it was interesting in the later days. At the beginning, it was challenging. So I was able to answer those questions. Uh, it was a real challenge and I could make it out. So I love teaching American students. And since I had a linguistic background, uh, I could teach them very well, uh, other than for the native students. Native Tamil students, the teaching methods are different. For the American or non-Tamils, the teaching methods are different. Yes, dear. I really like this. When students ask questions, then we have to be prepared completely, right? I mean, you have to sharpen yourself a lot. Just holding <laughs> yes. the text and reading, anyone can do that. But then, you know, gaining a lot of knowledge and being ready for any given question by the students, that really requires a legend to do that. You know, you should be really very focused on that. And you say that you have till date have never, uh, you know, found it difficult to answer their questions. You've always been ready mm -hmm. to answer their questions, no matter what kind of questions they pose with regard to their studies. That's really nice. Now, ma'am, you are a translator as well. You've been translating several books. Why did you enter into the field of translation? When I was in school, I studied in English medium school where we received books from London. So it was a very high standard uh, education. In Madurai, it was noise English school. Now it has become a matriculation school as usual. But in those days, it was one of the three schools in Madurai, the best school. Then in my college, I happened to move to Tamil literature. So I had a, a learning or uh, experience or s some sort of knowledge in both the uh, languages. When I did my MA, I learned Sanskrit for two semesters. 
then in uh, people's education trust i learned hebrew and greek and some malayalam also there i had some challenging translations so uh, i was moved to the field of translation i was good at it uh, when people appreciated me when they gave some translation words uh, i felt happy and i thought i could do more and more translations instead of teaching uh, and in the university i did my research on translation translation problems and solutions in tamil english poems from tamil to english and english to tamil so i had some uh, background like experience learning in translation studies uh, and i continued that as my profession also excellent excellent now ma'am you also have a short story collection titled as amaravettian kadal am i Adal. did i get that right yes yes and love of amaravati mm -hmm. yes and this is available on amazon.com and as well as poti.com and even in print media as well books so that's really nice could you just share some what kind of stories are these romantic stories detective stories yepti pat stories ma'am um romance and uh, ordinary uh, lower middle class people life of lower middle class people mm. those people lived along with me my neighbors my relatives my friends their stories i have written as a short story and i feel i feel very happy to read that stories or when i wrote i felt very happy all the, among all those 101 books i have brought uh, i am very much happy with this amaravathi in kadal because all those stories reflect my childhood days and the people who lived around me um, ordinary life stories nothing very strange or uh, detective some not like that ordinary life of the lower middle class people yes that's really nice to connect with the common man you know because yeah. there are several people who live in that stream the lower middle class stream or the middle middle class stream yes dear now ma'am i like this the first thing that one should do is to be daring and different how would you mm. like to go about this does it apply to your personality the yes uh, i keep it on my mind every time i should be first different and daring uh my aim in the school days is to come first so i should get uh, more marks uh, than other students something like that uh, i have a very good competitive spirit in my college days um, i was the best outgoing student uh, and i got pro proficiency prizes in all subjects and the second mark the difference between the first and second was a uh, almost 6 to 7 percentage so i did my best in my studies uh, then when, when i appeared for that um, net exam national evaluation test in the first uh, attempt itself i got it then this uh, translator best translator prize also um, when i applied i got it with no effort and my grandson also he has he has got that uh, exam csir now with 99 percentage effortlessly he didn't prepare very much for that but his school days learning his subject knowledge in school days he learned in he studied in um, i forgot the name of the school uh, in one of the best school in madurai then he did his uh, college in um, the american college so they gave him a good education so i love to do things and get it in the first attempt itself so i want to be different in that uh, ways and i am a bit daring also in what uh, way you daring in what way means uh, it is not hasty decision but i took decisions Uh, in a very short time i don't think about the uh, pros and cons what will happen that may lead to some hesitations so as soon as i want to do something i will say okay i will do 
and I will start doing it and uh, do that perfectly till date. I have never failed in any of my academic, <laughs> in my academic projects. Uh, such things I am a bit daring and I took up uh, quick decisions. It is not hasty, it is quick decisions. And I challenge it. A risk taker. So, we call that a risk taker. Yes. Uh, yes. I love taking risks. I don't, uh, I don't think more and more probe into it. Uh, think about the good, uh, good and bad in the future. I don't do it. Yes, dear. Now, ma'am, let's talk about your parents. Or if we could, if we, if could we focus on like intercaste parents from a rich mm. family, uh, from rich families, but yet in a poor situation. What is this all about? What is my lovely hut all about? If you could share all of that. <laughs> we lived in a very small hut, but I love that place. There were small, four small rooms. The total area of that my house is uh, would be uh, some 12 to 12 feet, 12 by 12 feet. So there would be two square rooms, eight by eight, and the two other small rooms, you could say. Um, I love that place. I had a separate place for everything. Uh, a place for everything and everything in its place. Uh, is in my house. But my mother used to tell my teachers, we live in a very small hut. I didn't understand why she is saying like that. My house is quite fine. Uh, then I came to know that uh, her maternal house, her mother's house was a big bungalow like that. <laughs> there was two elephant statues at the uh, gate you. with the, some few steps going up to the main uh, door. Then I came to know that she's from a, a very rich family. Uh, then my father's uh, background also, he, uh, they had a very big house in the North Masi Street, uh, which is at the heart of the town now. So I didn't know that earlier, uh, but they raised me as a very blessed child. Uh, although we lived in a small hut and uh, um, our economical uh, Background was very poor, but educationally, and we lived a very dignified life. Uh, my father used to, he is an astrologer, so most of the time he used to say some uh, poems um, written by Ahatyar Bohar, uh, like he was from a Siddha tradition. So there was uh, academic glow everywhere in our house, only books. Most of the time I used to be with the books only. There is no other play things or no friends to go and play. And I was not allowed to go outside the house also to play with others. Uh, but the problem is since there were um, no caste superior or inferior between their castes, but still um, my mother's aim was to get a cordial with her family because they won't uh, do that before. So it was her ambition in her life and uh, she got it done. Uh, but that pressure was exerted upon me from my childhood days. Study well, don't go there, don't uh, sit there, don't speak to them. There were so many conditions and a lot of pressure she put upon me. And uh, I had a very uh, unhappy childhood, I can say. Although they treated me very well, I was a little princess in my family, but my mother was not uh, kind or uh, happy with me. She used to beat me like uh, 10 or 20 times every time. If she starts beating me, she used to beat me with a uh, twig, uh, with a cane, like uh, 20 times. And I, I was not happy in my childhood days. Only thing I know is I should study well. And uh, it was like that. But my house was really good. Even now, if I stay in a big house like this with the air-conditioned rooms and other things, I still want back. I want to go back to my small hut made of mud walls and a thatched roof. It was cool and comfortable. Yes, dear. You remind me of the beating I also got as a little kid. Yes. I, we were three of us and I got most of the beating. I was the youngest one. So yeah, I would do a lot of mischief, get the beating. And again, do it again and get the beating again. 
So I could resonate with you on that. You were a very, uh, you know, humble child, like you were focused only on studies and all of that. I was a bit notorious on, on the other side, like I was quite naughty. <laughs> yes, dear. Thank you for sharing all of that. Thank you for being so open and frank and sharing that. It's really nice. Now, ma'am, we'd like you to share about you have no longing for money, no longing for comfort. You say that mm. and you're focused only on ambition and uh, like no distraction, anything. What's all this all about? Like, see, everybody who lives like they want some amount of money because once they retire, they need that money. They need a lot of comforts. But you say otherwise. So why is it so I didn't apply for any job. If uh, and uh, I have been offered lecturership from my Lady Dog College twice, and uh, I refused it. If I would have joined it, uh, I would have earned one lakh per month. But I was not very particular about it. I want to do something which I liked. That is, I wanted to be a journalist or a lecturer in some university, and. Um, for uh, around 20 to 25 years, there was a case um, dispute or something like that uh, regarding the roster system in appointing people in Madurai University. And other universities, I didn't know. Um, so they didn't call for the lecturers and I didn't apply for any university, which I loved to. And for colleges, I didn't apply because I didn't want to go to a college as a lecturer. Uh, the, those three colleges too, some of my friends, they requested to come and join in that college. So I uh, went for two colleges and I worked there for only three semesters. And in American College at Madurai, uh, it was a challenge that uh, many people are applying for that and it is very difficult to get a job in that college. Uh, so I applied and 113 members were there for uh, the written test. Then there was another interview, then teaching class, teaching the students. Uh, fourth round, they selected the person and I was selected. So it was a challenging interview for me. So I appeared and I was there for three semesters only. So um, I didn't go for any job with the thing in my mind that I will get 50,000 or 60,000 as a salary per month. Uh, I wanted to do things uh, which interested me or which I liked on my own. And um, about my children also, I didn't want them to go to a government job because in the government jobs, they are prone to bribe. So even if they don't like it, they have to accept it. So I didn't want them to go for government jobs. So in some way or other, uh, I am very selective about earning and uh, shopping or uh, fun loving, spending money on different things. Uh, I didn't do that and I didn't raise my children also like that. So it was a different thing when they offer a job and refusing that. In those days, uh, I was criticized for that, that I, I didn't place myself in a good institution and uh, I'm not uh, wise enough to <laughs> get along with the society. Um, but I didn't have any regrets over that. Now I have reached the point which I wish to. Uh, I've got the best translator prize. I have written 100 books. My children are in good positions. Uh, my grandson has is following my legacy, he has come up like me with all my values and uh, systems of work. So I'm happy in my life. I've achieved what I wanted to. That's really nice. That's wonderful, ma'am. That's great to know. Now, ma'am, let's talk about single parenting. What mm. are your thoughts and views with regard to single parenting? Uh, now, in today's world, the scenario today is both men and women are single parents. Or sometimes they co-parent the child, even if they are separated or either the demise of one person. So we'll talk about single parenting. What are your thoughts and views with regard to this? Single parenting is really a difficult one. Sometimes we feel that uh, um, at least we are away from the grudges of the partner Very or true. from the torture of the partner. But the other side of that is really a struggle. Now we see men also parenting their kids. 
usually women they choose to be a single parent uh, when the husbands go for a second wife or go or when they don't like this first wife uh, health issues many things are involved in it whatever it is as a single parent um suffered a lot within me within myself um for the outside world they may not know that uh, i have a lot of struggles people think that i am uh, very bold uh, and uh, i can manage with my sister with my brother my family was supporting me to the fullest so and my and i had very good friends among men as well as women and they were supporting me i had a good moral support from good people around me still it is a burden it's a burden uh, in the sense till now i feel that i am responsible for my children they are grown up one is 44 and one is 42 and my grandson is 24 still i think that i am responsible for my children and i give them some advices i tell them uh, what to do and what not to do uh, and uh, i feel that responsibility is lying upon me and i think uh, all the single parents that the mothers or fathers they have such issues in their mind so um and the gossips uh, nagging those things we have to face boldly although we face it we challenge it in the outside world among the society within ourselves we have some cry and sigh uh, so that is uh, others do not know uh, we put a mask of boldness and courage but still there is some pain and agony in the minds of parents and uh, in the forthcoming days in the future it it's going to become more and more so i have a suggestion that single parents may live together like two or three mothers with their children in a family that may give a little support to each other uh, instead of living as one parent one mother or one father with their kids uh, at least they could live together and make a group of families in a ho- house that will make a homely feeling uh, that's a, a suggestion which i thought about thank you you'll get some security you'll be uh, like safe you know your children will be taken care of like there will be like like a big family we can share some views uh, uh, we can share our feelings with the other mother who could uh, get it in a right way that's all yes dear that's very true now ma'am uh, we'll talk about feminism ma'am now mm. we've seen most of the women suffering silently because of societal pressure or fear of what the society will tell and many women right from the ancient times till date till date they are struggling just because the society is ready to point fingers at them and they have you know suffered at the hands of their in-laws or their husband or, or any number of sufferings they have been going through so what do you have to say about it should women really undergo all of the torture and then come out of it one fine day or at the start itself you know find a way out and dignifiedly move out you know in that mm. there are two options if we speak about feminism people think that uh, we are um, demanding um, sexual freedom it is not that we are demanding respect, respect. trust and love that is feminism trust me love me respect me that is feminism nothing more than that when i was um, in people's education trust i had an opportunity to be with the um, affected women like single women or uh, women who are hysteric um, then some sort of women who like spinsters uh, then widows young young widows uh, who have some sort of sexual problems with men or with husbands who could not 
get along with their husbands due to this um, uh, sexual torture. I did a research and uh, I happened to interview many women from different homes. Uh, then we gave some suggestions how to tackle the uh, personal problems of women uh, in their houses, then in their work spots. That is something different. We always talk about the uh, work spots and uh, other type of sexual abuses. But in their houses, they face a lot of abuses from their husbands. First of all, from their husbands. Later, from their in-laws and other things. So at that time, I came to know that women are more powerful, more sexually strong, stronger than men. But they do not know what's their power, what's their strength is. So they think that uh, they are like slaves and they have to be inside the four walls and never uh, share their feelings and uh, sufferings with others. Uh, then when, when I went to them, uh, they felt very happy and relaxed to share their problems with them. Then we suggested few things uh, so that uh, if a woman has a long periods and other things, if she could not satisfy her husband, what else she could do to have lead a happy life? But now, then when I came to know about Lilith, I was astonished because Lilith is a female character who was the first creation of uh, by God. A woman created by God was not Eve, it was Lilith. I've been with the, this uh, Bible translation people for a almost 10 years, but no one have uttered that word Lilith to me. But Lilith was the first woman created by God and she claimed a top position to her husband, Adam, and he refused. So Lilith was the first feminist, which I want to say here. She claimed for her position, but she was refused. She was put down pulled down and uh, she is the feminist, first feminist that we could uh, know about. And later some stories were created on her that uh, she used to suck the semen from men and um, she, will know, she will prevent men from giving babies. So she is a baby eater or a, she is a baby killer. This type of stories were created because she claimed for a top position. Whenever a woman want to be at the top where, or when a woman in the top position claim her rights, see, she is put away with. Her character is assassinated in different ways. Even now they do it. So the story is the same for Lilith and any woman in the present society. And uh, here I came to know that Pidari Amman in southern districts or in Tamil Nadu, uh, who is a representative of the Naga community, the serpent community, community. Serpent is the forefather of the South Indian people or the Dravidians, the total South Indian. So when serpent was their forefather, Serpentus is Pidari. She is worshipped as the clan deity in many families in Tamil Nadu. She was portrayed as a baby eater. See, usually we portray women as a baby giver. But she was portrayed as a baby eater when women or men do are harmful to each other or to the society, she will take away their babies. She will punish them by eating their babies. Some sort of stories have been coined. So, if a woman is submissive, she is praised as a good woman, a goddess, Lakshmi or Parvati, uh, as an angel. If she uh, speaks against the protests, against the society or against men folk, she has been branded as a killer or a, a person who is not submissive, aggressive, Something like that, her character is assassinated. So a feminist is misunderstood from the 
first born first uh, from the first oh, woman man. till date very interesting ma'am even i did not know that there was this person called as lilith, lilith. i just uh, didn't know that and i got to know it from you and that's very nice uh, to get to know about it and you've explained feminism very well what do we require as women it is respect love and trust trust Yes, the first thing is respect, I guess, like all women out there would be focusing on respect to be respected by their uh, spouses and the family members. That's really very nice. That's really nice that you are into this field and you have such knowledge about it and you're explaining it so well. That's really, really nice. When, you do, when did you take an interest to, you know, come into the field and to understand the problem of other women and to, you know, be a source of, uh, you know, healing to them or something like, as you mentioned, if you're very submissive, you're an angel, you're a goddess, you're very sweet and all. But then when you retaliate against abuse, it could be any form of abuse, then you become, uh, you know, demonic or you become like uh, the opposite of an angel. So you put that very clear for us. When did you come, uh, try to, you know, put yourself into it and understand the pain of other women? What made you do that? My first translation is, in 1985, it was a book released in 1975 at Nairobi International Women Conference. Authors of the book were Dr. Neera Desai and Vibhuti Patel. They were in the Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai. And Ritama David, an English professor from Lady Doe College, she uh, translated that book and she could not finish it by 1985. The decade is going to over. At that time, she gave the book to me and I... I did it very quickly. It was only four or five chapters for me. The rest was done by others. So we brought that book and she released the book with Dr. Saraswati Ramanathan in Chennai. So that was Indian women. Uh, I read about Indian women, the common problems of the Indian women. In Lady Do College, when I was doing BA, our uh, optional subject was women's studies. So... Uh, I had a good uh, knowledge about women around the world, uh, Russian women, the uh, provisions or the privileges that Russian women enjoyed. Uh, they used to go for part-time work, like 10 to 2, and they will be back before their children uh, come home from the school. Uh, so I had uh, such knowledge about women. And... Um, uh, when I translated these things, then I started translating uh, about really the women in religion or the goddesses or deities in different religion. Then I came to know like Dagini in Buddhism. She is also posed as a, a devil-like uh, creature that she will kill people. Dagini then, they call it as Dagini then in Jap Jap uh, Japan. It was in Tamil, uh, in the Mani Mehala epic as Idagini Pei. So Pei means a devil. So whoever the women, whenever the women is like Kali. Kali is arrogant because she wants to defeat Lord Shiva. And she could not do it because Lord Shiva had a foul play that he um, took his leg to, the, to his head and the woman cannot do it. But nowadays, women can do that. Like uh, in gymnastics, we see that women are doing wonders. Uh, so uh, they put some sort of fence around us that you should do this or do that. In those days, in Tamil, there was a word tolil. Tolil means a profession. Tolil refers to only prostitution in Tamil. So, yeah. Um, uh, work or a job done by woman is only prostitution. That is for money. In in those days, that word was, uh, uh, the, it was referring only to prostitution. Tholil. If we say our tholil saira, that means she is doing some prostitution. Later on, it has changed. Nowadays, tholil means any uh, work. So, when society, the education, um, employment, empowerment, came to women, things changed drastically and now it is reaching the other extreme. So when women are considered, in Tamil Nadu we have come up um, than uh, like uh, other states. In education, 
uh, employment and empowerment in all three fields uh, women are standing top so i am very happy to say that because in tamil nadu um, family control uh, it it had a very good support from the people when it started in 1967 when dmk came to power and anna became the chief minister uh, when that family control came with the two children they stopped and they went for other work so from that day onwards education and uh, employment some sort of uh, financial independence they gained and uh, uh, now they are in good position when compa compared to other states tamil nadu is standing first and i am proud to say that that's wonderful ma'am that's really nice no ma'am i'm really happy that you are in this space you know enlightening others empowering others making them understand the real importance of their lives it, you know, especially the women who do not feel that they are important in the society the way you talk makes us feel important now dear i'd like you to talk about uh, you know this thing that is connected with the third gender mm. like are they respected now even though there is a law in place are they receiving the same respect or are they still let down in our indian society in the west it is really uh, they are just very happy and comfortable in the west third gender but what about india in spite of law being there for them are they well protected or still they criticized or would like to know your thoughts on that mm, things are changing now in those days they were allowed to do only some uh, cooking work the men who used to walk like women uh, they were allowed to do some cooking then they come for crying like professional um, lamenting they come for that uh, but nowadays they go for this um, surgery in hospitals and uh, many have a um, a different challenging life whereas in those days they were bullied and uh, they didn't have a very a happy life in those days but now things are changing especially the surgery um system nowadays they do it in the hospital so their life is not at stake and uh, now the in in tamil nadu they have a um, reservation also in government jobs in colleges they come to college and study they have a reservation uh, they are police women nowadays they are appointed in the police department as uh, sub inspectors police and uh, one of them has passed ias also so now things are changing but the parents are not ready to take them back it still continues but the next generation takes them they accept them in their families but the father mother uncle aunt they don't uh, they were reluctant but their children their brothers sisters uh, now they are a bit open enough to accept them and um, now we, they have some in tamil nadu they have a um, houses are built for them and uh, some loans are given for them to start new business and near the general hospital there is a, a canteen um by the transgenders so now in tamil nadu we have many opportunities for them and they enjoy uh, different privileges also uh, now things are changing now, now uh, slowly gradually people are accepting transgenders as ordinary human beings and i hope things will change in future also they will live with their parents now they don't live with their parents but um, in the near future they may find a place at their family itself yes dear. thank you so much ma'am for sharing all of that and i'm really happy that uh, the third genders respected in tamil nadu so well as you mentioned there are many government schemes for them housing schemes etc they are accepted in the jobs there are certain reservations for them as you mentioned i've been interviewing quite a few uh, transgenders and those who belong to the lgbtq q community they have a very sad uh, from different states not from tamil nadu from different states they have a very sad uh, story to share 
how they have been neglected by their parents and not accepted or if they're accepted by the parents, the society is not ever accepted them. They've been sexually abused in school by their teachers and how people are still speaking, you know, negatively about them whenever they have a look at them. So they always isolate them. And there are quite a few of them who have shared their story. It's very sad, but you give us hope. What you shared now give us hope, uh, gives us hope that yes, they have a better future and things will be all well for them. And you even made an appeal to parents to accept the children. Yes, and to understand the reality that yes, this is not uh, something that they do it on purpose. It is something invent within them. And it's quite difficult for them to you know uh, live either as a male or a female. So let them live like who they are. That's really wonderful. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. And I'm happy and thanks to the government of Tamil Nadu for being so sensitive and so understanding with regard to the third gender. I, that's really very much uh, appreciated. And we would love all the other states in India also to focus and to build the lives of these people, give them their due respect. In, in, that's really nice. Now, ma'am, I'd like to ask you personally, what kind of adventure did you face in life or what type of a challenge, what type of challenges you had to face in life? The most difficult phase in your life, which was the most toughest phase, if you could put that. Hmm. When I happened to divorce my husband, my father, uh, he he favored me. He was in favor of my, that uh, uh, decision and he signed in that document. He was happy in that decision. But we didn't expect that will, that will happen in our life. Okay. At that time, he told me that I have to leave the house with my clothes. And I told, I sent word. Uh, some another person was bringing that word, and I sent word to to him that he can take his clothes and leave. And that's what it happened. The main idea in his mind was to take everything from me, my jewels and other things from me. Uh, but it didn't uh, happen. I was very stubborn because everything was my hard-earned property. So I was not willing to give even a single pie for him. And I didn't uh, get anything from him. I raised my children uh, on my own. After six months, my, my father passed away. And my mother, who was not supporting my divorce, she and my brother told everyone that my father passed away because of me. And that was hurting. I was burned to ashes at that time. Yeah, in the death house, they didn't allow me to do the funeral rituals for my dad. And then I became very sick for almost three months. I was hospitalized uh, due to stress. Uh, and uh, my sister was with me for those three months and uh, she brought me back. So that was the most worst time that I um, faced in my life. When my, when my husband left me, then my father left me, then I could not bear that. So I felt sick, but my sister was with me. She was my second mother and uh, she took care of my children and uh, she took care of me. Uh, I used to go and admit in any hospital, whenever I see a hospital, I, I will think, oh, this hospital is nice. Uh, I could be there safe and secured. I had a very insecure feeling at that time. To uh, get over that, it was a real challenge. And uh, uh, the treatment which they gave uh, affected my memory power. Uh, nowadays, I couldn't... Uh, um, I forget the first page when I come to the second page when I read a book. So it was very difficult to regain my memory. Um, the uh, latest memories, uh, I don't, uh, I feel it difficult to get back. So uh, that was a very challenging period in my life. Uh, it, uh, it was a horrible time. But nowadays, I am afraid of hospitals. When I see in a hospital, I will think, oh, my God, I should not get admitted in any hospital. Uh, I should die at peace at home. Um, but in those days, whenever I see a hospital, I used to think I could go and admit myself here and it would be uh, nice. 
So that was the time and that was my um, mind, my thought, my life was, so it was the worst time in my life when I lost my father. Yes, I understand that. And you're quite brave, ma'am. In spite of all the challenges, uh, you've emerged victorious today. You're sharing it all with us. You're sharing it like an open book and you're giving courage to other women to stand up for themselves. No matter what, if you feel there's any injustice in your life, uh, you should stand up for the right cause and you've been able to take care of your children. And I should give a big thank you uh, here on the International Fab Dogs to your sister who stood by you at that difficult time. And I should even appreciate your dad who's now in heaven. Like he stood by you and he you know, was able to make you feel secure that if not you're not happy in your marital home, I am there for you. And he stood by you. That's wonderful. Nevertheless, your brother and mom, they were against it and they blamed you. But anyway, you succeeded on that path. You overcome that uh, adventurous uh, situation or maybe you could call it as not adventurous. We can't put it as the tough, toughest moment in your life. And when you shared all of that, I could visualize you actually in that phase. You know, I could create that mental picture in my mind, the way you were sharing it and the pain that you've end endured. I could understand all of that. Yes, dear. But there are brave women like you and there will be many more like you. And many will become brave after listening to your story today, when you, which you have shared so boldly. Thank you so much. Now, dear ma'am, that's really nice. What about traveling, dear? How many states of India you have traveled? Have you been out of India? I have never been anywhere. The longest distance I have traveled is only Chennai. I haven't traveled anywhere and I'm not a lover of travel. I don't like to go anywhere outside my home. I used to sit here and write that song. Whenever the, some TV stations, televisions or others, they asked me to come for uh, some interviews. I used to go to Chennai only. And a few other places near Madurai I have gone, but not. Um, I haven't crossed Tamil Nadu. Once I went to Kerala, that's all. Um, I used to come to Chennai for giving um, interviews. So, so far, I have released more than 100 videos. Most of them are about MGR and uh, others about uh, Hindu gods, the science behind the religion, uh, those things I've done. Yes, dear. Now, as you just mentioned, uh, you know, the great personality, MGR. How did you develop an interest in his work, in his films? When did it start? MGR was an actor, come politician, as far as I know him, till his death. After his death, I came to read about him in various magazines. Uh, then I collected them. I had a different picture of them, that he's a great human being. When I happened to teach Tamil for American students, they asked, one day they asked me a question, why actors are becoming politicians here? And I told them from the day of drama, stage drama onwards, people here, they sang songs about uh, Indian in independence movement, uh, like K.B. Sundarambal, Kittapa, her husband Kittapa, and others, they used to sing on the stage. They kindled the uh, fire of uh, independence among the viewers, audience. Uh, then in the cinemas, uh, like DK and DMK, they spread their views, they propagated their uh, ideas through cinemas. Then they become, uh, most of the DMK leaders were uh, from the field of arts. So they were able to act, speak, uh, write poems, write stories. Uh, so it happened. And MJR also now became the chief minister. Then I took them to a few films. Every Sunday we have a grand uh, function in the theater and uh, till date MGR films are released in the theaters. Uh, I took those students to the films and they loved it. They want to do some research on it and I helped them. Then the uh, head of the communication department, Reverend uh, CRW David, he did a research in the Tamil Nadu Theological Seminary on the topic PhD research, communicative values of MGR solo songs. I collected many songs and uh, data for them, for him. So all these things were uh, with me. 
and when the MGR centenary celebration started, uh, Vikadan magazine wanted a um, person to write something different about MGR, and uh, Kolagala Srinivas to, uh, suggested my name to them, and Vikadan people approached me. Then uh, Tamil Mahan, sir, uh, Vikadan editor, he approached me, and uh, I wrote some four articles. It was good, so they asked me to write 30 articles. Then from Canada, TamilAuthors.com, they asked me and I wrote 60 articles for them. Then I published these articles in the as a book <clears throat> in um, the culmination time, like 2018, July 15th, I published my first book from that day onwards. I have published uh, around 98 books. Before that, I have published only two books, Indian Women, a translation of Indian Women and Urban Theology in Tamil. And uh, from 2018, July 15th onwards, I have started publi writing, publishing uh, 98 books. So uh, then I felt I met uh, his relatives, uh, his colleagues, his officers, uh, other people. Uh, his fans. Then I collected a lot and lot and I felt that he is a phenomenon and he is a real legacy which is carried forward in Tamil filmdom and in other places also. So it, there are so many things to write about him. So I was in a plan to write 100 books as a literature student. As a film technology person and as a political science person, people can write many books on him, uh, like a hundred books in each field. And the, there are plenty of things to share about him. Yes, dear. that's really nice, ma'am. Th thank you for sharing all of that. Thank you for showing interest in that great personality. Uh, Mr. MGR is really revered in Tamil Nadu. That's really nice. And uh, you plan to even like, you know, write a hundred books, like you've already done 20 plus, right? So maybe now the remaining, that's your uh, dream dream project, I guess, or your bucket list. Yes, dear. And you will definitely complete that the beautiful dream of yours. You. Now, ma'am, there are several people now who cannot understand the meaning of freedom. To different people, freedom means different things. To you, what does freedom mean? Freedom means freedom for doing my work, which is helpful for the society. Whatever we do must be helpful or supportive for the society. And uh, I don't, I shouldn't say that freedom is what I love to do, which may be against or which is um, harmful for the society. That is not freedom. Freedom means we can do anything, but it should be for the people around us, not only for our family members. Even they justify bribe as doing good for the family. I have to raise my children. I have a family. I have to build a house. I have to settle myself. So I bribe. That's not the thing. That we could not, we should not support. So whatever is good for the society or for the public, uh, we have we should have the freedom to do that. So that is freedom. Freedom doesn't mean uh, doing anything against the social rules for the fun of a particular person or for the happiness of one particular person or one particular family, one community, one language. It is not like that. It, it should be for the entire human world. And not only human beings, for the flora and fauna, animals and birds also. Mm. Yes, dear. that's really nice, ma'am. Thank you for sharing your views with regard to freedom. What is that one thing you love about Dr. C. Rajeshwari? What do you <laughs> admire in Dr. C. Rajeshwari? Yes, dear. Myself. I, I love what I am now. Uh, although I am not as, uh, as others are, uh, I follow a different way in my life. I have some different principles and different way of living. And I love whatever I do. 
and I'm strong in that. I don't have any waving, fickling mind or thought about my um, deeds or my activities. I don't have any regrets in my life that I should not have done it. I should have done this, nothing like that. Till date, um, only thing which I want to change or I could not change is I expect more from others and I get disappointed. That is the thing which I could not change in my life, uh, which I feel very unhappy about me, that I expect more. I want others to be like me and uh, God has created each one in a different way. Uh, we are not molded in from one particular mold. So we are different. Uh, but so many, many a times I feel that, that I expect more from others. So I get disappointed. That's the worst thing in my life. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. Now, dear. How would you want people to remember Dr. C. Rajeshwari? In what way? You are a researcher, a publisher, an editor, a translator, all of this. How, how should the people in the world remember you? Because one fine day we all leave this planet. So when we are no more, what type of memories would you want people to have about you in their minds? As a translator, my books will be there. Uh, if not 101, at least some 10 books will be here for a long, long years, uh, maybe for 100 or 1,000 years. My English translations of Tamil classic literature would be here. And I would be remembered as a translator, and that is my contribution for the society. And my books on social sciences, about the science of religion, science of gods, uh, those things uh, is a real contribution that others have not done. There are some researchers who have done on one or two things, but uh, I have done a, a very remarkable work on the social uh, science side. Then one more thing, the translation work. Translation from English poems to Tamil and uh, Tamil Purananur, Ahananur, Sangam literature, ancient literature, didactic literature, medieval literature, and modern uh, poems. So these things will be remembered. And in the history of literature, there will be a page or a paragraph on my name. So definitely I will be remembered. That's really nice. That's wonderful. Now, ma'am, what brings a smile to your face? What brings a smile to your face? When do you smile? Now, see, <laughs> you you have your grandson. Now, he is doing wonders. He's just like you. He's carrying on your wonderful legacy. Now, Because I raised him. Uh, my children were raised by my mother and my sister. Um, I didn't uh, take enough care or each and everything to make my children sit and study or do this or that. Uh, once upon a time, I was committing almost 10 times suicide. And uh, every evening when my daughter comes to the to home, she used to come and sit beside me and ask, why ma? Uh, and I'll say, go and study, go, go. She will leave me. So I was not a happy, it was not a happy time with me for my children. But when my grandson was born, um, I planned to raise him uh, as I wished. So uh, I gave him enough um, time or interest. I motivated him in reading English and Tamil texts and to be good at, well-versed at math, science, and English. Uh, then um, he did a good job. He learned, he studied a lot. Then I trained him in drawing. Um, then uh, I made him learn uh, German, French, Hindi. Uh, he knows a little bit of Malayalam. So many languages I made him learn. So, so many things, whatever he could study at that age, I helped him to study uh, several things. And um, moreover, he, he is a man of um, discipline and principles. He is a lover of nature. He goes uh, several times for trekking, then forestry uh, to uh, see the birds, bird watcher. 
so many things. Uh, even now he has gone to Amradanandamayi Ashram to enjoy the sea besides that. He loves to be there, uh, spend two or three days there. So uh, he is a man of principles. He doesn't want to go for a job, uh, getting more salary. Instead, he wants to have a job satisfaction in his college. He wants to give something, give back to his college. And uh, I love him and he will be my legacy afterwards. I believe. Although my children are good, uh, I feel happy that I raised him in the way that I wanted my child to be and uh, I've succeeded in that. I'm happy about it. So whenever the word Ahil comes, I smile. And there are other two grandchildren, Satyadev and Adira, they are four and two. So I don't think I would be there with them to raise them as I did uh, Ahil. Um, I don't know. Yes, dear. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for sharing. That's really very nice. Thank you so much. You have so much of love in your heart. That's really wonderful. Now, ma'am, we give you a time machine in your hand. This is a common question for all the celebrities. We give you a time machine in hand and ask you to click the button that's visible over there that takes you into the past era where you have to relive somebody's life and come back. You have to select some personality of the past era. Whose life you'd love to relive and come back? Is it MGR or somebody else? I want my sir, my teacher, my Guru Nadar, Reverend Y. Robinson Levy, because he taught me several languages and translation. He gave me challenging translation. Whenever I get, I feel happy that I have translated a book, like Madurai Kanji, I have finished translating, Mullai Pata, I have finished translating. I want to go and tell him, but he's no more. He passed away 18 years back. Uh, I was with him for 10 years. He taught me um, Bhagavad Gita and uh, several things in Quran to learn the religion, how to understand the religion. Religion is an outcome of the society and nothing but uh, nothing to do with gods. Uh, so uh, if I have get a chance, I want him to come back and teach me more. Yes, dear. That's wonderful, ma'am. That's really nice to know about it. Now, what about cooking, ma'am? Are you a great cook? Nalla Samuel Varuma. I have no interest in cooking. My daughter cooks very well. She gives me food. Uh, I cooked for myself when I was working in Yerod uh, in women's college for uh, some one and a half years. I cooked for myself. Uh, if I cook, I will do well. I, I do cooking perfectly and uh, tastefully, but uh, I'm not interested in cooking because I dislike the peeling onions. It smells, uh, the fingertip smells. So if everything is done for me, I can do the stove work alone. Um, but I have no interest in it. If someone gives me some food, even some plain food I, uh, I wish to eat, I'm not a uh, foodie and uh, I don't like hot and spicy food. I want my food to be smooth, sweet uh, and cool. So some sort of fruits, desserts, cakes, I like very much. Or porridge, kali, cool, palayasore, whatever it is, leftovers, mm -hmm. I, I like to eat. But not very hot and spicy, tasty, yummy, delicious. <laughs> Those words are not in my uh, lingua franca. Somehow I resonate with you. I also resonate with you. Even I am not a good cook. <laughs> yes, dear, I get that. And now, ma'am, I'd like you to give a message to all the youngsters outside. All the young girls and boys, the younger generation, they are into depression, anxiety. They may have a breakup in their life or they may not yet have got a wonderful job that they are with their dream job. They are all depressed and sad, they may have toxic parents. What is the message with all the experiences and exposure that you've had? What is the message that you'd love to give all these children? I like to celebrate my birthday every year and I used to celebrate grandly. As far as I could, I celebrate my birthday grandly. Because that is the day I celebrate for myself. The other um, festivals uh, have some other reasons. After my death, Others should remember my birthday. Okay. For that, 
uh, everyone should give something back to the society. That is my message. You have taken a lot from the, the government has given you a lot. The elders have given you rich advices. Your parents have spent their hard-earned money on you. Your acquaintance, your neighbors, your friends, everyone. So it is not that one person uh, yeah, is alone. He is surrounded by many. So every person should try to give something back to the society. Whatever may be. Um, it may be um, even if a child is raised in a good manner, it is a gift to the society. So we must not raise a child as a greedy person, as a selfish person. If we do that, then we are doing something harmful to the society. So uh, my simple and sincere advice is try to give something back to the society in a good way. Yes, dear. That's wonderful, ma'am. Thank you for this beautiful message. I, I really enjoyed that uh, session with you. I got to learn a lot and I admire your courage, your boldness, your frankness and the way you shared everything so very well on different aspects we've spoken. I would love you to share your time once more with us on the International Fab Talks in part two as well in the near future. Thank you so much, ma'am. Before we end, one small Thank request. Uh, I would like you to share three words, three powerful, empowering words Apart from please, sorry, and thank you, you could share it either in Tamil or in English as a gift for the international families. Trust, love, and self-respect. That's the thing which uh, I would like to share among you. Please have trust upon others. Retain your self-respect. Don't lose it at any cost for any person. Even for your mother or child, don't lose your self-respect. Love everyone. Not only your family and friends, uh, any worm, a butterfly, a bird, an animal, a tree, anything, a foreigner. So love others, respect them, trust them, keep yourself respect. So these are these three are my uh, words in my life, I, which I follow in my life, which I want others to follow in their lives too. Love, trust, self-respect. Yes, dear. So, dear friends, you have a wonderful message from ma'am. Love, trust, and self-respect. Keep all of these three very close to your heart. You will have a beautiful life. You can say respect, uh, respect alone. Love, trust, and respect. If you respect others, definitely you will maintain your self-respect. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you for being so kind and sharing your time at short notice on special request. You are here with us. Thank you very much. Looking forward to many more interactions. Rombo Nandri, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. I haven't uh, shared these things with in my other interviews. It uh, it is a very um, <laughs> charging experience for me. I have shared many things, and uh, I love to. I love to do that. And since it is a very short time, you asked me, I couldn't prepare anything different. And uh, I am true to my heart and I love them. Thank you for such a beautiful experience. Thank you so much. Thank you, dear. Thank you so much. You've just spoken from your heart. You've shared everything which yes. is genuine <laughs> and true. That's the beauty of you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, dear. My dear friends, with this, we'd like to come to an end to the International Fab Talks for today. Do stay connected with us. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to share this wonderful video. And above all, love yourself, respect your family, and keep smiling. Keep smiling. Stay safe.